بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سٹوڈنٹ ٹوڈے وی ول ڈسکس دا ریمیننگ پروسیس آف کین شوگر پروڈکشن آفٹر کلیریفکیشن پروسیس دیٹ آر فلٹریشن کرسٹلائزیشن ایویپوریشن سینٹریفیوگیشن اینڈ دین ڈرائنگ اینڈ پیکجنگ As in last lecture, we already discussed in detail about clarification as we know that clarification is performed on cane raw juice to eliminate all kinds of impurities that may be in any kind like colloidal, suspended or soluble form. Raw cane juice that obtained to mill is turbid liquid coating a lot of impurities that must be removed by liming, carbonation, phosphitation, sulfitation methods of clarification. After removing the impurities from the raw cane juice, It is further sent to next processing unit that we will discuss today in detail. Now, first of all, we will discuss about the filtration process. Filtration is the first one process after clarification of the raw juice of sugar cane. Clarification is performed to remove unnecessary non-sugary material from the raw cane juice in order to obtain better crystallization of the sugar. Also, it helps for the production of white sugar free from the impurities and also reduces the loss of sugar in final molasses. After clarification process, we obtain brilliant, light colored, transparent, clear juice which is free from all kind of impurities that may be in colloidal, suspended or precipitated form. Once the impurities are reduced from the raw cane juice by clarification, it must be filtered by using vacuum filtration technology. As a result of filtration, the cleared juice sent to evaporation for unit for concentrating the juice into syrup while mud from clarifier sent to vacuum filtration assembly as this mud still contain some residual juice along impurities. So for better production of the cane sugar, this mud must be filtered. In the clarifier, the hot limed juice separates into three layers. The top layer is of scum consisting of fine fiber particles and the bottom layer is of the mud of heavy PPT. Now middle layer consists of clear juice. The mud and scum are filtered under pressure to produce cakes. Now cakes are washed and washing are sent back to clarify. While middle layer sent to evaporator for the concentration of the juice into syrup. Now mud from clarifier still contain some residual juice. 
Now filtered is done to extract residual juice in rotary vacuum filters as shown in picture. Now at the end of the slide, there are picture of filtration assembly that used to separate out cleared juice and muddy cake. The next step is evaporation. What is evaporation? It is a phenomenon in which water reduces into vapor by using heat or steam and resulting material become concentrated. Now it is very important unit in sugar industry because in this unit the cane juice becomes thick and converted into cane syrup that has very low quantity of water and sent to further unit that is crystallization unit. The clarified juice is dilute and contains about 85% of water. Juice evaporated to obtain super saturated solution. Increase concentration of the juice from 15% bricks to 65% bricks. Juice preheated to around 107 to 110 degrees Celsius. There are two types of evaporators. The first one is single effect evaporators and the second multi effect evaporator. Evaporation is carried down multiple effect evaporator made up of three, four or five evaporation connected in series. The individual evaporator being called insects, bodies or pens. Each of the bodies consists of a closed cylindrical vertical vessel provided with a calendria or bank of tubes. In the annular spaces of which low pressure steam is admitted for heating the juice. The multiple effect system utilizes the latent heat of steam as many times as there are bodies in the system. The bodies are arranged in the steam so that body has a high vacuum. The steam enters the calendar of the first body and vapors from the boiling room pass over to calendar of the second body where because of a high vacuum. The juice boils at a lower temperature releasing vapors for heating the juice in the third body and so on. Vapors from the last body go to condenser, the juice moving continuously from one body to the next becomes success successively thicker until in the final body about 75% of the original water has been removed. The thickened juice called syrup contains about 60% or more solid. Now the syrup obtained from the evaporator is again sulfited by passing sulfur dioxide gas through it in continuous or batch type tank in order to bleach it and also to precipitate any lime salt 
present and thereby improve the quality of the sugar. The syrup with or without simple filtration is sent for crystallization in vacuum pans. Now the evaporator tank. An evaporator is a tall cylindrical bottle necked vessel made of mild steel. The top and bottom chambers are called juice chambers and middle chamber is steam chamber. The juice moves up through two narrow tubes and comes down through the wider tubes. Steam used to evaporate the juice. 1 liter steam to evaporate 4 liter juice. No steam temperature 85 to 90 degree Celsius at first pan and 40 degree Celsius at the last pan. Each subsequent vessel with decreasing pressure as the last pan being under almost a total vacuum. Next, we will talk about what is the difference between single effect evaporator and multi effect evaporator. Now, firstly, we describe the single effect evaporator. In a single effect evaporator, the steam provides energy for vaporization and the vapor product is condensed and removed from the system. Single effect evaporator effect is less common in sugar industry. As we can see the diagram of single effect evaporator, it consists of elongated single cylinders made up of stainless steel in which condenser tubes are attached. The raw tube inlet is at bottom of evaporator while steam inlet present at the top of the evaporator. Both hot steam and raw juice moves in opposite direction for vaporizing the watery content of the juice that are condensed and release out while concentrated raw is easily separate out for further processing. But single effect evaporator is not commonly used because it is cost effective as well as efficiency of evaporation is also less as compared to multi evaporator effect. Now we will discuss multi effect evaporator. As its name indicates multi effect, so it consists of more than one evaporator tank that connect in a series. The top of the first evaporator is connected to second evaporator and top of the second evaporator is connected to the third evaporator by the steam outlet pipe. The steam outlet pipe of the last evaporator is connected to the vacuum pan in two stages by evaporating water the first stage of concentration is done in multiple effect evaporator where water content is reduced to 35% to form heavy syrup.
now the first evaporator is exhausted and it is heated by passing steam as a result juice is heated and salted boiling then water is evaporated from the juice the partially concentrated juice is moved to the second evaporator it is exhausted to a greater degree than the first evaporator the evaporator is repeated the syrup of the second evaporator is more concentrated as the same steam is used for the heating the juice in three different evaporators fuel is saved then water content it is reduced to 9.1% leading from crystallization of the sugar the syrup obtained from the evaporator is again sulfited by passing sulfur dioxide gas through it in continuous a gas type tank in order to bleach it and also to precipitate any lime salt present and thereby improve the quality of the sugar the syrup with or without simple filtration is sent for the crystallization in vacuum pans now we will discuss the diagram of multi effect evaporator in diagram we can see the long steel less steel cylindrical evaporator are connected in series in cane juice inlet is at first evaporator and in same evaporator tank at the top a steam inlet is present here the most concentration take place about 70 to 80% and then concentrated juice sent to next second evaporator tank now the steam is also passes to the second evaporator the temperature of the second evaporator is more as compared to first one and hence more water is removed about 9 to 10% and send it to the third evaporator tank the steam used in all evaporator tank is the same as move in next evaporator tank its degree of hardness is increased in third evaporator tank more steam exhausted and juice coming from the second evaporator become more concentrated and more thicker and also eventually thick syrup sent to crystallization unit one to the main advantage of multi effect evaporator is consumption of fuel is low and efficiency of evaporation is very high because same steam is passed out from the tank to the tank and similarly as more contact time of raw juice and steam
after evaporation next step is crystallization what is crystallization formation of sugar crystal from thick cane syrup is called crystallization crystallization is carried out in single effect high vacuum boiling pans the clarified syrup is subject to the boiling in vacuum pan where its further concentration leads to super saturation zone and the formation of the sugar crystals a three or four stages boiling scheme is selected keeping in view of the syrup purity and size of the sugar crystals desired and the exhaustion of the mother liquor bricks which is solid sugar in liquid is increased from 65% to 75% by boiling at 60 degrees celsius a typical three boiling scheme is generally adopted in most of the sugar factories the syrup is boiled in vacuum pans to crystallize as messy cute a mixture of sugar crystals and mother liquor which is also known as molasses vacuum pans are essentially like a single body of multiple effect evaporator and work in batch operations at high vacuum 660 mm and 54 degree celsius boiling point in order to produce a uniform grade of sugar the sugar which is virtually of same color and composition the complex boiling system comprising two to four boilings are practiced the number of boilings and their techniques used depend upon such factors as the purity of the syrup the grade of the sugar desired and the level of the exhaustibility of the final molasses required Boiling of the syrup in vacuum pans is a highly skilled operation and is carried out by experienced pan boilers. After a vacuum of 635 mm has been created in the pan syrup is drawn in a quantity roughly a quarter of the pan steam is admitted into calandria or steam coils of the pan and syrup is boiled to grain as soon as the syrup becomes super saturated this is determined either by instruments like cytometer or from samples drawn by an instrument called proof stick grain is made to form either by the lowering the temperature or more generally by adding seed crystals of the fine sugar the grains are grown sufficiently large by continuous admission of the syrup into the pan 
and progressive boiling under careful many pollution of temperature steam and rate of feed of the syrup care is taken to see that after proper greening has been achieved no secondary greens or false greens are formed afresh as this marks the uniformity of the size of sugar crystals the crystal growth is allowed till the required green size attained during the growth false greens are likely to be formed and finally same solid mass called as messy cute is formed that consists of sucrose and molasses the messy cute containing 9 to 11% water is sent to crystallizer tank messy cubes for example a b c after boiling in the pans discharged into crystallizers and for treatment of the messy cubes where residual salting out of the sugar to exhaust the mother liquor takes place three or four stages exhaustion minimizes the sugar loss in lost or final mother liquor which is called final molasses and is sent out to storage and disposal the crystallizer tank which has cooling attachment cooling reduces sucrose solubility to attain maximum sugar recovery and messy cubes are sent for centrifugation to recover the sugar examination of the boiling syrup by withdrawing samples is therefore carried out at regular intervals in case the false greens appear these are dissolved out by drying in some cold water or clarified fresh juice when the pans are fully boiled to desired size of the greens the vacuum is released and the pan is dropped or struck for example the boiling is stopped the resulting mixture of the grains and syrup called messy cute is run out of the pan into crystallizer where residual crystallization continues further The crystallizers are U-shaped or cylindrical vessels equipped with cooling and stirring arrangements. Now we will discuss about centrifugation. The objective of centrifugation after crystallization is the separation of the crystals. the sugar crystals are separated from mother liquor in centrifuge machine centrifuge operates at 100 to 1800 rpm rotation per minute molasses pass through perforations while separated sugar crystals are washed with 85 degree celsius water 
After centrifugation, two products are obtained. First, one is raw sugar and the other one is molasses. The partially cold massitude from the crystallizer is free to centrifugal machine revolving at about 100 to 1800 rpm. The baskets of the centrifuge are perforated and a copper screen having the holes is placed inside the basket. The mother liquor, which is also known as molasses, adhering to crystals goes out of the holes of the screen. The crystals are given a spray of hot water to wash them free from molasses, followed by steaming to drive out the water. The hot moist sugar is discharged into hoppers fitted below the centrifugal machines. The sugar from the hopper is transferred to a long hopper or a cascade type cooler and from there sometimes to a hot air drum type dryer for drying. It is finally shifted to obtain crystals of different size uh, and bagged. A typical purity of the first massicured is about 90% and that of molasses obtained from it about 70%. The molasses after mixing with some fresh syrup are washings from the first messy cured so as to raise the purity to 76 to 78 percent is again boiled in vacuum pan crystallized as the second messy cured and crystals separated and dried as before. Now the second molasses purity is 53 to 54 percent is very viscous and as such it is difficult to grain directly. It is conditioned by slight dilution with water and heating by the steam and mixed with a portion of fully grained syrup and boiled to form the third messy cured. In this manner, the clarified syrup is boiled to three or four messy cures according to the predetermined system of the boiling. The final molasses which may fall to 35% or lower purity is conveyed to reservoirs. It constitutes a good source of alcohol and many other chemicals of industrial importance. Now we summarize the working of centrifugation process. Curing of A, B and C massicures is done in centrifugals to separate the respective molasses from the sugar crystals. First one is a messy cured, where from commercial sugar obtained is cured in vertical batch type machines with automation and recycling controls. Sugar in basket is washed with superheated wash water 
and steam and also molasses is fractionated into heavy and light fractions now the next one is b messy cured which is cured in vertical continuous machines where the heavy molasses is separated now the third one is c messy cured which is also cured in continuous centrifuges normally in two stages in the first stage final molasses is obtained which is sent out and light molasses is obtained back from reboiling in the second stage c sugar is melted and used for a boiling as in picture a centrifugation machine is shown that used to separate and sugar crystals out from the molasses now we will discuss and summarize the whole part that followed by the sugar cane to form the raw sugar in the flow sheet we can see after harvesting of the sugar cane it goes to the mill for the cutting by using rotating knife then cane chips sent to mill house for the extraction of the juice in the mill house there are production of the two products one is cane juice and second is bagasse that is a solid residue bagasse is also a useful by product because of its extensively usage like substitute of fuel in many sugar mill this bagasse is used for production of the steam that used for the evaporation of the water from raw cane juice in evaporating unit while cane juice extracted out send to further steam heater where it boils and off and heated juice sent to clarifier unit now the clarifier unit all the impurities are removed out by using different methods of the clarification like liming carbonation sulfitation phosphitation and double carbonation and also double sulfitation after removing the impurities cleared clarified sent to multi effect evaporator for removal of water from the juice by using hard steam and then sent to single effect evaporator for the more concentration of the juice now the concentrated juice or thick cane syrup is produced and sent to crystallization unit where the production of the sugar crystal take place from the thick syrup 
the end product of the crystallization unit is a sugar crystal along molasses mar mother liquor called messy cured these product sent to next unit that is centrifugation the purpose of centrifugation is to separate sugar crystal from the molasses as a result of centrifugation we got the molasses and raw sugar raw sugar is sent to next unit for further processing like drying and then packaging and eventually goes to refining unit meanwhile molasses is also an important by product of sugar mills molasses is a thick dark brown syrup contain sucrose and widely used for the production of the ethanol in different pharmaceutical industries by the fermentation process after obtaining the crystals of the sugar next step is drying why the drawing of sugar crystals are necessary because sugar crystals contain moisture content so it must be removed from the sugar crystal for long shelf life of the sugar crystal otherwise moisture content leads to fermentation of the sucrose the sugar as discharged from the centrifugal machines contains high moisture and temperature sugar conditioning meant reducing the moisture content of the sugar to 0.02 to 0.05% and to cool down the sugar on hopper or rotary dryer before packing This dryer or hopper discharges the sugar in the foot of the sugar elevator which delivers it into the graders now sugar draws moisture from the air and could spoil if it absorbs too much hence the proper sugar packaging is required the sugar packed is 50 kg gunny or bags is stacked in the sugar gudons what is gunny bags these bags are basically sacks made up of jute in below picture it is clearly seen while pp bags are polypropylene bags that are plastic sacks that usually used for packing purpose the sugar packed in 50 kg gunny or pp bag is stacked in sugar gudons to prevent its deterioration in storage or the go down 
should be constructed in such a way to provide the storage facilities with controlled humidity of 60 to 65 percent to prevent the sugar from the absorbing moisture. Now these are all references about this topic. Now this is your assignment. Thank you so much.